This is the Obscurity to Authority podcast with your host, Darren Cabral. Thanks for joining me. Absolutely, man. Coach, I'm excited to be here. The a big, the, the big yeah. coach, eh? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I was thinking about what you were saying offline about going from kind of – I call it like baby star to big star. Right. You know, there's a transition from from – from a nobody to a somebody, right? Mm. From obscurity to authority, as you said. I, th- I think Love it. that's a great business to be in, man, because there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of talent and potential, but they don't know how to become known in the world. They really don't. So you, you, you fulfill a big purpose in the world. I love it. Thank you so much for that, man. We just started. I'm already flattered. <laughs> You're too good. Thank you so much. Well, hey, we're here with Coach Michael Burt. For those of you that don't know, you would have just heard the intro, but Coach Michael Burt is is a monster. He's a monster producer, to be more specific. Um, and Coach, why don't you tell everybody about what it is that you do? What I really do is I take complicated concepts and I make them simple. What I really do is provide a structure for a person to typically get a 40 to 50% increase in a one-year cycle. Most likely entrepreneurs, sales professionals, anybody that is interested in growth. I do it a lot in very saturated or commoditized industries, uh, you know, real estate, mortgage, insurance, anywhere there's lots of people competing for the same space and they're looking for an unfair advantage. I personally believe who's coaching you can give you that advantage. Uh, I believe a good coach can change your whole life. And I believe those that have a good coach consistently out earn those that don't. So that's really what I'm doing now through a program called Monster Producer. Wow, that's great. And I, I've been following you. I mean, you're, you're jet setting all over the place in the jets. You got, you got the van. You got the coaching van. I love that. <laughs> you are. You, you, you honed in, man. I'm honed in. No, but I've been following you for a while. Actually, the first, the first time I saw you was at 10X in Vegas. Yeah. Um, that was the first time I, I think a lot of people would have introduced you at that same point. You had about 10,000 people there in the room. Um, and you were great. You were one of the best speakers up there for the whole event. Um, and I really kind of fell into your content. I saw what you were doing. I followed it. It was great. Um, and I noticed you've been blowing up the last like year and a bit. You guys have been expanding. You've been growing. Tell me about that. You know, I think we're hardwired to ex- expand. I think anytime you suppress that, we call it prey drive in our coaching program, which is the ability to see something and then go get it and have the, have the whatever it takes mindset to go get it. So I think what you're seeing is the manifestation of 10 years of headed in a direction. 10X was certainly a, a, a big moment for me because it exposed me to so many more people and it exposed me to an international market. Uh, so most people don't have a talent problem to what to, to your, what you do for a living. They really got an obscurity problem. And I'm still fighting that, becoming mm-hmm. going from a local to a regional to a national to an international person. And so that's what we're trying to do every single day is ex- take this message, push it out to the market, and be who I am, not try to be somebody else. But be who I am, but magnify that. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I would tend to agree. I think there's a lot of great people doing a lot of great things that they just need to work on getting known. And you guys are doing a great job of that. I've seen the path. I've seen the growth. Um, you're reaching a lot of people. You're helping a lot of people. Uh, and you're partnering with a lot of people. It's just a matter of continuing to push that message out, right? So who, who's your ideal client? Who's someone that you work with? My ideal client is what I call a Red Bull entrepreneur. They're 30 to 45 years old. They're all jacked up on energy, but they but they lack structure. They know they can perform at a higher level. They're hungry, humble, teachable, coachable. Uh, they typically have some income, so they're not scared. You know, they're not scared to death. A lot of people in our program are earning, let's just say, a hundred thousand to four million dollars a year, but they know there's a whole new level for them to reach. They're baby stars, but have big potential to be big stars that's who that's who we love working with interesting so i might have to uh, actually talk about or look into these coaching services afterwards because i think that's somewhere we'd, we'd fall into myself Absolutely. um and i'm 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 one of the like i'm one of the guys that will spend like i i'm a strong believer in paying for education paying for mentorship paying for speed basically um, yes. which is probably something you're, you're you're quite aligned with and i do it all the time every year i hire or i'll involve in some sort of coaching program or mastermind i always make sure to keep it current last year was i don't know if you know craig ballantyne is a canadian yeah, yeah, yeah. So Craig, Craig's my coach, was my coach at the moment. I did the full workshop with him last year. I've been doing stuff monthly since then. Um, and it's been fantastic in the area he's he's been into. It's helped a lot. Um, now I want to add someone to that list. So I think that might be interesting to kind of conversate about. But do you think you could help someone like me, owning a marketing agency, that kind of deal? Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. There, there's, there's four areas we coach entrepreneurs, and that's where I would put you. You're an entrepreneur. It's got a very special skill set. 
in marketing, in a certain type of marketing, or helping people go from obscurity to authority. Mm. So what I do is I coach you through these structures. The first structure is how you explain your services in a world-class way. That's going to play in everything you do. Uh, how you work a selling system to generate leads and business. Number three, how you follow up to bring a person to close. Number four, how you extract referrals out of all of your current clients. And number five, how you become a person of interest in the world. And that's around a book I wrote called Person of Interest. And that's really becoming known for something. The word famous means known, renowned, celebrated. Uh, that's really what you want to do is, is, like I said, you don't have a talent problem. Most people don't have a talent problem. They just really truly have an obscurity problem or a marketing problem. Most people don't know who they are. Interesting. That that's very true. I agree. So hey, let's talk about you for a bit because I, I want to break this down because people see you now on Instagram, on Facebook. You're, you're on these jets, like I said, these cool vans. You're helping um, you know, huge power players. You're transforming lives. You're speaking to groups of ten thousand people. Um, you probably didn't start there. I think that's fair to say. Where did you come from? Who is Coach Michael Burt? Man, I came from a small town of less than 2,500 people inside the city limits. I grew up as a sports uh, fanatic. I was playing sports at six years old. Really at six, that a, another coach said to me, son, one of these days you're going to be a great coach. And I began to hear that my whole uh, adolescent years is, hmm. son, one of these days you're going to be a great coach. One of these days you're going to – so I was already thinking, analyzing. My high school coach called me professor. And so at 15 years old, I started coaching junior pro basketball. That would lead me to being a head coach at 18 at a small elementary school. Then at 19, I went to the second largest high school in Tennessee. Uh, by 21, I was the head coach of that high school. And that's really where I started learning these philosophies of inner engineering people to win, how to build the whole person, the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. And we were winning so much and getting so much notoriety that a lot of people were asking me what I was doing. And you know you're doing something really well when you're getting requ incoming requests to, to, to pick your brain. So I, I began writing books at 25 years old about how I was doing it, what wow. I was doing, how I was building a culture. And when I began to write the books, business people began to call me and say, will you speak at this and will you speak at that? And, hmm. and you're right. It didn't start off in a 10,000-seat arena or with a <laughs> private jet or with a Mercedes Sprinter. It started off on what I call the rubber chicken circuit, the bad chicken <laughs> Typically, seventy-five year olds in the audience. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I certainly did my round of free engagements of, uh, of you know, but that's how you get better, man. That, that's yeah. literally how you get better is that long obedience in the same direction. You get better every day. And my wife and I just did a mm. podcast. She's got a new book out called "Living with a Monster," mm. and uh, and her book is about how you live with an obsessed person. And and you know, th this is new to her. She's not out front. She's not a star. She's not. So she's very nervous about these things. And I'm like, listen, when you do this a hundred times, five hundred times, a thousand times, this is going to seem like nothing to you. Confidence is the memory of success. Interesting. I like that. Confidence is the memory of success. Right. That's exactly what it is. And, and listen, success happens through consistent, repetitive, ongoing, systematic action. That's how you become. That's how you have that memory of, oh, well, I know how to do this because I've done it so many times. It's like a nut. It's nothing, nothing to you. That's where your confidence comes from. Internal knowing you can create or manifest based on past performance. Interesting. So someone now struggling, if someone's going into an industry now or trying to build a business now, and for whatever reason, they're scared to get started or they're not confident in what they can deliver. How do you do that? How, how do you go about servicing somebody and delivering on a product or service before you know that you can if you have no confidence? Yeah, it's a great question. Here's no what I tell people. When you're low on swag. Mm. You can borrow from somebody else who's got some. Ooh. Okay. So, so every morning I borrow confidence from other people. I listen to podcasts. I read books. I just did a retreat this weekend with Tim Grover that wrote the book nice. Relentless. So he and I are good friends. We just finished a three day retreat together. The guy reeks of confidence, man. Mm. Well, you're con so if I was low on confidence, it could take one statement from Tim. To say, Coach, you got this. One one comment from another person can build your confidence. Now, coincidentally, what takes years to build up can take seconds to tear down. Mm -hmm. So so when I take my confidence and I give it up to other people, I will allow other people to control my confidence. I have now placed my destiny in another person's hands. And you never want to let another person stand between you and your destiny. Interesting. I like that. I li I've never thought of that, actually. I thought I was going to stump you already, but I didn't get it. 
<laughs> I've been doing this a long time, brother. It's hard that's, stuff. I believe it, man. I believe it. But that's good. See, that's good stuff because I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs that, that are in that space, especially the younger ones. I mean, we have all kinds listening to this show. We have younger ones. We have people still working their nine to fives that want to get into business. We have people running pretty big businesses. It's kind of all across the board. But I think particularly there's there's these younger you know guys and girls getting started um, that they have a lot of that fear. They're just not sure – can I do it? I, I I get that all the time. Like I have friends that want to get into business, and the thing I hear all the time is, I don't know enough yet. I'm not good enough yet. I don't think I'm better than that. And for some reason, everyone thinks they have to be the best, most confident, most successful person in that field to do just that. One, which is great. Try to get there, but you don't have to be there before you start anything, right? So the fact that you can borrow swag, so to speak, to get you in that headspace and get that confidence. But what's interesting to me with this is, I think there's a few parts of that. There's the free part, which you mentioned, like you could listen to a podcast, you, but you could also buy swag, right? If I hire you or when I hire Craig and I have you guys in my corner, is that not bringing in confidence? Yeah, and that's exactly right. And I would tell you there's only so much swag you can borrow on YouTube without getting in the room. I mean I have people that watch me on YouTube or watch me on Facebook or watch me in different things, and they say, oh, you're coaching me. Like a, a guy came to my coaching program the other day and said, man, I love you. I watch you. I'm so honored to meet you. And I'm like, well, are, are you are you going to get in the coaching program? And he's like, no, man, I, I watch you for free on YouTube. And I'm like, there's a significant difference between watching me on YouTube and yeah. being in the room with me, eyeball to eyeball. There's no different than there's a difference between uh, listening to a CD or a CD. I don't even know if people have those. Listen to <laughs> iTunes and and seeing the person performing concert. So when when you said something a minute ago about this concept of confidence, yes, you can borrow from someone. I think what I try to instill in my coaching clients is a, is a contagious confidence mm -hmm. is I have an intense but positive nature that has been honed and refined over the last 20 to 30 years of me coaching. And I try to still, so what you sensed in me at 10 X from the stage was that contagious confidence. And I was trying to pour it into you mm -hmm. and I wanted to connect with you. You go that guy right there. I, he, he's got something that I'm interested in. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I definitely felt that. Like when I was sitting in the audience, that was something that was that was quite apparent. I mean, it was a great event. The thing was, I I, I personally found the 10x event fantastic, but it is overwhelming. Like everyone, you're like, damn, I want everything, right? And so I think a lot of people have that just paralysis by analysis. What's the right thing to invest in? Um, and I'm sure a lot of people walked away not making any investment just because there's too many options, right? But you did well. So I'm assuming you pulled quite a few people from that crowd, hopefully, um, and you deserve it and you've been crushing it. I got to get your book. I got to look into this coaching. I know you – like someone for me, what would be the best? Because you have a bunch of programs I've seen in masterminds and group. What would be something for someone like me and maybe someone in my situation? Yeah, that's a great question. I think – here's how I ask questions. I say, Darren, how would you like to experience the coaching? Mm. And some people say, well, I'd like to go deeper with you in a two or three day setting. Well, then you need to come to one of my retreats, just like I did with me and Tim Grover, just like uh, in a few weeks, me and Tim Story are doing a retreat in Vero Beach where we're spending three days with each other. Or so, or you say, look, I want to come in person. So you, you want to come to the Greatness Factory and experience the live training with me. Or you say, look, I want to watch it online via, via simulcast. Some people say, I love your online academy. I want to experience it through your online academy. So we have different doors. Interesting. For you to walk into based on how you believe you would like to experience the coaching. Mm. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm a big believer of that whole in person. I mean, like I saw you guys, you did something with Brad Lee where you guys went to a house. I guess that's one of the retreats, right? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, because that's the kind of thing I, I love getting around people because I think there's a lot of power to that proximity as well that you can't. Um, you can learn a lot online, but I don't think you can get that that power through proximity. Like I'd rather be next to you. I'd rather be like you said, eyeball to eyeball. Um, that's that's my style. So do you just do different retreats every month, or is it the s same program? Like what's running with that? Yeah, it's really a different retreat almost every month. It's not every month, but but I do a lot in the spring, a lot in the fall. I typically partner with a high profile person that I would like to learn from. For example, like me and Tim Grover just finished the three day retreat, which was incredible. He was incredible. The retreat was incredible. Uh, Tim's story's got a different theme. That one's about bigger future. Uh, Brad Lee's coming into Nashville pretty soon to work with my high level members where we'll nice. do a mastermind there. Uh, you know, so I'd pick a theme and the theme like the founders retreat or uh, the relentless retreat or uh, bigger future with Coach Bird and Tim story. This weekend I'm doing one in Houston, Texas called Double Your Energy, Double Your Income, and that's with the world renowned uh, doctor. 
So he'll talk about how the body works and how you perform at a high frequency. I'll talk about my selling system, how to double your energy, double your income. So I, I, I typically do one of these in different parts of the country. Some of them, I own the real estate. So I own the house in Florida. We do these at oh, that's I own cool. the big lodge in Tennessee. Uh, and that's called intentional congruence where uh, everything feeds everything. The retreat, my coaching business feeds my retreat business, feeds my the real estate feed. You see what I'm saying? It's all connected to each other. That's a big trouble mm-hmm. for people how to live an, intention, an intentionally congruent life. Yeah, that's that's a big part of what I've been trying to refine over the last year or so is just getting everything to work together. There's so many different ideas, products, op. It's trying to make it all so that it flows together and works together. Are you big in real estate? Like, are you, are you big into the investing side? I am. Where I'm big in real estate is buying unique properties around the country that we both rent to the public and also use those as retreat properties. So the house in Florida is a nine bedroom house. Uh, the big lodge in Tennessee sits on 23 acres. It's about, it's about a 9,000 square foot lodge that I own. So I typically invest in things that A, I can use personally. B, we can generate business from because my belief is take every liability you have and turn it into an asset. The jet can be an asset. The bus can be an asset. The houses can be assets. All of those can be assets. Interesting. Yeah, that that that's definitely a way that I'm trying to go as well. I mean, because we have we have a real estate investment business, but we go a much more kind of boring route about it, which is we're buying single family homes. We're converting them into multifamily. Because if you know anything about like the Toronto real estate market, it's ridiculous. Um, so we we convert into multifamily and we rent out. It's just a long term cash flow play, which is great. It makes money. Um, but it's not that fun. <laughs> so yeah. I, I've, I've been wanting to expand it to something like what you just mentioned. Like, can I take, can I play on what I'm doing in marketing? Like, I mean, I do a lot of speaking too. I'm probably where you were the first year you started. I'm doing a lot of free events. I'm going all like, sure. you know, there's, I think actually we're going to see each other. Are, are you doing the, um, the hustling grind con in April? I am. Yes. So I'm speaking. I'll, I'll be there. Awesome. That's cool. So I'll be there. I'll be doing one of the round tables. I won't be on stage. That's a friend of mine doing the event. Um, yes. So I do a lot of that stuff. So I'm trying to also get into that and how can we do more marketing events, training people and build on the coaching and the marketing side, not just the services. So I'm trying to figure out how can I play into real estate and you just gave me a really good idea, which is why not find these really cool properties that are fun to be in, both whatever, Airbnb them out, but also use them for our events, our workshops, our masterminds. Yeah, because oh, cool. I was doing the same thing you were doing. I When I made my first big lick financially, I went out and purchased a lot of single family residential Houses. I sat on those houses for three or four years. When the market came back, I sold them for large profits. I then 1031 exchanged them into these bigger properties that I own. So I'm a big believer in scaling up that way. I don't get involved in the apartment, uh, apartment or multifamily. Not yet. Not, not to say I won't, but I'm interested in building greatness factories, Mm -hmm. which are unique destination locations that I can generate large amounts of income by, by the right people coming and learning and growing. And so, and greatness factory for kids. So everybody has their thing that when they generate excess cash, they want to play into for their future, for their legacy. And for me, it's greatness factories and greatness factories for kids. Interesting. So explain that. What are greatness factories? The greatness factory is a vision I had probably three or four years ago, which is a unique destination. So you're in Toronto, right? Yeah. Imagine in Toronto, uh, a unique destination location where the top business people gravitate to. So there's permanent offices in there. There's a gym. There's a meditation spa. There's a training facility, podcast studio, mm. uh, dream and incubation rooms, uh, rooftop experience. There's nine different revenue drivers, shared office space. Uh, so this is a place that pulls the best people from every market, and they're going to want to come to the Greatness Factory for the association, for the partnership, for the relationship. So, for example, we have seven of ten permanent offices rented. And the new greatness factory, I haven't even built it. Wow. So those people are investing 3500 a month, 42000 a year for their office at the greatness factory. Wow. Now, why? Because the real estate's prime. What if you were the only title person? What if you were the only marketing person in there? The only uh, uh, real estate, the only mortgage person, the only uh, uh, attorney. And all these people that I'm driving in there, they see you. Your representative is there. So the Greatness Factory is a concept I want to uh, build, scale, mm. franchise. Something I introduced at 10X, I showed a picture of the Greatness Factory, if you remember at the end, mm. which is this unique, cool building that is real modern, and it is attracting the best people in each community. Now, the Greatness Factory for Kids right now is an online uh, it's an online academy right now for kids. So just like you know, I see you've got Cardone stuff behind you. 
I have my own online academy called Monster Producer. Now we're trying to build Monster Kids. So I have an online academy for kids that we're selling to schools, parents, private schools, public schools. And uh, it's confidence, bounce back, how to handle rejection, hmm. all of those things. We're constantly trying to teach these same things to kids. That's great. See, because I, I see a lot of big players now are going that route, at least doing something on the side, helping that generation, the younger generation, because I think that that's that's essential. Like, I mean, who has Andy Frisella, the MF CEO, he has the, the whatever Charlie and Otis or whatever is the books yeah. for kids. Yeah. Um, I think Jocko Willinks now has the books for kids. Oh, right. Like everyone. And that's so smart. Right. Because those are the ones you're going to actually have. If you want to have the most impact, impact them at that age. Like that will shift everything. Was that your thinking behind servicing the younger generation? Well, it, it, it is an opportunity, a financial opportunity, but, but I was a high school women's coach for a decade, and I inter-engineered kids to win. Like, that was what I became known for. Mm. That's where I started. Uh, now I have a six-year-old daughter, and I want to make sure she has the equipment she needs to be successful in a modern and competitive world. So I'm, I want to really become known for the number one guy as it relates to building, maintaining, and protecting kids' confidence around the country. See, that's fantastic. See, we, we need more people like you doing that because I, I'm starting to see hope because I've been starting to look, you know, as, as the new generation is being born, I'm starting to look at it and go like, man, the education system is, is so flawed. The universities are flawed. The elementary schools are flawed. And I go like, how are these kids going to, going to get through and evolve? But then nature's taking its course and these, these high performers like yourself are coming up and doing something about it when no one else is, when the government's definitely not doing it. Um, and I think there's hope. I mean, if, if you do it, it's going to inspire someone else to do it and someone else, and a lot of people are going to join this fight, which is going to be pretty interesting. That's right. Well, and Very I think cool. I kind of had this desire every time I was working my planner, you know, I have a planner that I map out my days in and it's a monster producer planner that I created. And at the top, it's like, what's the three biggest things you got to do today, coach? And for me, I kept writing down, I'm supposed to be doing something for kids. I'm supposed to be doing something for kids. And I fought it for a long time until finally one day I quit fighting it. And I just said, man, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And what am I going to do? I'm going to do all the things I learned as a head women's basketball coach for a decade, which is a unique advantage I have over a lot of these people. A lot of these people have not worked with kids that are creating kids programs. You know, So I have directly worked with kids for a decade refining what they need to be ready to perform at a high level. I, sometimes I think the 20 to 30 year old, it wants to be great, but they're confused. It's a real confused generation. And the reason I say that is because we employ 20 to 30 year olds. We have a, a program called Monster Young Professional. So they're 18 to 25 year olds that I'm coaching monthly. Okay. And that's, that's a program for them. And uh, m mainly what I see them looking for is to, to decrease their confusion. Uh, that they experience in a day. They haven't found their voice. They haven't found their talents. They don't know what bus they're supposed to be on. So I think a good coach should bring clarity to your confusion. I agree. I agree. See, that that's fantastic. I'm glad to hear you're doing that. Um, I think that's going to have huge, huge impact. Uh, but let's go back to, I want to talk now about, let's talk about the, the, the typical client for you, these, these business folks, these entrepreneurs. What are the top three typical biggest problems they're facing? the barriers they're facing, the, what's, what's holding them back from success that you see the most in people? Typically, they don't have I, – I'm shocked at how business people do not have a customer generation system. Mm. The purpose of any business is to create a customer. Mm. And I see people do things all day long that have nothing to do with generating new business. You know, So most of them do not have a good selling system or what I call prospecting system. They do not have a good follow-up system. So they're losing lots of leads due to poor follow-up. That's why I wrote the book Million Dollar Follow-Up. And they do not have a good extraction of referral strategy. Like how are they how are they creating structures in the future to push people to – for people to exchange, to get people excited, to have a value ladder of more things to sell people? Right. These are key things that I see a lot of people – they just they just don't have, man. They just, these, are, these are missing structures. Now – when I tell you that I could get you a 40% increase in your business, to me, that's easy. We go to work on those three things, we're going to get you a 40% increase. Easy. Once we get your gener uh, you know, lead generation right, once we get – and I'm not talking about buying leads. I'm talking about a relationship prospecting system to generate leads. Sometimes I've generated as many as 400 in a week wow. without, buying, without buying any leads, without buying any leads. It's just work in the system, follow-up correct, and extraction of referrals. We get those things right with you, your business is going to grow. It can't help but grow.
And and probably in in the early cases, like in, in newer businesses, let's say they're only making 150 grand a year, but have tons of potential. You could probably do a lot more than 40 percent, right? If they're on a rapid trajectory. Absolutely. Listen, you should grow. You should grow 20 percent just by getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> like I don't even get excited about 20 percent. Like yeah. like I'm interested in rapid hyper growth. Yeah. You no. Know? And and so I work a system. I get my sales team working a system. So I'm in the business of finding and filling missing structures. That's the business I'm in as a coach. A good coach should help you find and fill your missing structures. Yeah, that that that's great. That's really great. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at a business like ours was new. Like I started about two and a half years ago with the marketing agency, and that that was like me in a bedroom doing marketing freelancing. Uh, and we've scaled. We've hired multiple full time employees. We're growing. But in just that two and a half years, obviously, because the first year of the revenue is nothing, it's been a pretty consistent, I'd give it 300% growth from the first year to the second year, which is good. And the second year, now it's the third year, is almost another 300% growth, right? So those are numbers like you, if you had someone like you in our corner actually supporting and guiding that, you might see those those three-figure growth patterns or even four-figure, four-digit. Like, have you seen it? Like, could you work with someone like me? Let's say, let's say they're doing 200000 would it be reasonable to go from two hundred thousand to a million dollars in a year? Is that possible? That's a, that's a it depends on the vehicle. Mm. Some vehicles can scale up that fast. Interesting. But 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 it may be interesting to take you to two, from two hundred to four hundred, from two hundred to six hundred. It may be hard to go from two hundred thousand to a million, yeah. just depending on the vehicle. Yeah. Depending on how the business is structured. So remember, a business is designed before there is a business. Mm. A poorly designed business always have to be redesigned. At some point in the future. Interesting. Yeah. See that that's good to know. But I think I think is is that not an inevitable part of businesses? What like won't most most businesses evolve as they go because you just won't know the future? Or is it possible to predict what's coming? Well, I think no. I don't think you can predict what's coming. I think you can predict your behavior. I think you can predict your work ethic. I think you can predict uh, how hard you go. I don't think you can predict the future. Now, you hear me, you, you, have you ever heard the concept of being a level 10 person and a level 2 opportunity? No. The, the, here's, here's a big concept for your viewers today. Yeah. Um, and I think it may have been Brunson that said this, or somebody said this to Russell Brunson, that, that I see a lot of level 10 people like you. You're talented. you got all this stuff going for you, but you may be in a vehicle that's a level 2 opportunity. For example, I was a level 10 person coaching high school basketball. <laughs> yeah, I was a level two guy in a level four opportunity. Yeah. So until I got out and started my business, now I'm a level ten guy, and and and, and it, I'm still tweaking my business model, but I'm trying to become a level ten to build a level ten business. Right. Which means scale it. Right. I can grow it rapidly. Yeah. I can reach anybody on planet Earth. That's kind of what that's kind of what I'm looking at. So. You just don't want. I see a lot of level ten people and level four opportunities. <laughs> see that that's a great point because that's actually been on my mind quite a bit. Because when I started the business, obviously I, I had no guidance, I had no idea what I was doing. And for the first year and a half, two years, it was a strict service play. Hey, come to us. We have a service. Pay us every month for this service, and that was it. Like I didn't think about value ladders. I didn't think about oh, this isn't scalable. Like it's just people in my city are going to work with us, and they want FaceTime all the time, and we're kind of stuck, and we can't go beyond this little bubble. And that stuff starts to become very apparent because as I hit certain certain targets, right, as you get to the six figures and you go beyond that, you go, oh, my God, like how much farther – not only can I take it, I probably can take it farther, but how much farther do I want to take it <laughs> because this is getting messy, right? Until then I would realize, oh, you know what? I have to bring in other parts of my value ladder, and that's when coaching came into play, like specifically social media marketing coaching for businesses um, as well as our own academy. So we have an academy coming out April 1st, which nice. is social media training. It's a much lower ticket. So instead of them paying us five grand a month as an, ag as an agency client, someone could spend 199 bucks a month, get access to a whole suite of training on every platform, um, get monthly live training from us in webinar formats, get email coaching every week from us in the same, and very low barrier. So we can reach more people. I can sell that in the States. I can sell that in Canada. I can sell that in the UK. I started to become aware. Like, I'm just correcting that course now. Like I'm just in the process. So it's funny that you, you said that because I hit that say like three to six months ago, I hit that realization hard. And I was like, this agency business, I can't do this forever. I can't do one-to-one -one services locally in person forever. Right. Now imagine doing that. I had a guy in my coaching program once that told me this. He said, you're going to go out and do everything that that you write about in your books. You're going to become a person of interest, and then you're going to hate your business. <laughs> and what he was saying is you're going to create so much – you're going to create so much demand 
in your business that it's going to overwhelm you. And, and okay, so for example, at 10x, let's say we signed up 175 new people in wow. an hour. Let me tell you this: we were not ready for that. We weren't ready to sign up 175 in an hour. Our system wasn't ready. That's our crazy. staff wasn't ready. The infrastructure wasn't ready. But I didn't know that yeah. until I signed up the 175 people yeah. in an hour. Now you mentioned earlier so many people that didn't purchase that 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 didn't purchase something with you. I would tell you that there was a whole bunch of people that purchased and didn't do anything with it. I had yeah. people purchase my program, never do anything with it. A year later, you know, a, a year later they haven't even opened it. <laughs> they haven't even logged in. They haven't even done anything. Like like people are just now starting to log in to what they purchased with me last February. So, yeah. You know, people get excited. Yeah, they start with true. good intention, they fall off the wagon, and then they feel guilty about it. That that's very true. And I've actually noticed that. Like, we started pre-selling some of the courses in our academy, and it's pretty mind-boggling that three months ago people bought it and have since not logged in. And I'm like, and I've come to realize people people buy an outcome, right? Some people just feel better buying what they think the outcome is. Like, I'll buy that. I'll get better at social media marketing. They buy it, but they never do it. But they forget that buying it doesn't create the outcome. Taking the action creates the outcome, right? Which Sometimes is, it's like huge. a book. You don't have to read the book. You just got to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's true because, yeah. you know, I take, I take my buddy Grover who wrote Relentless. That's a killer concept, man. Yeah. I don't have to read the whole book to get it. I just got to look at it. I walk in my office and I look at that Relentless book and I'm like, rrr. <laughs> <laughs> my point is it's a strong concept. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so to me, but there's a lot of lack of execution, mm. lack of follow-up, distraction. Uh, there's so many things happening in a day. That um, there's just so many ways to be distracted in today's world that you get to get off course. Yeah, no, I I believe it. And I totally agree. I mean, especially with books, I'm a big believer that it's never really. I, I can't remember most books that I've read beginning to end, but I can remember one or two key concepts, and that's all it really took to matter. Absolutely. Right? So that that's something that I think is important. But again, the action still mattered. It's finding those one or two things. I like got 10x. I noticed in my whole section. I was maybe one of two or three people out of a hundred or so that actually had a notebook out that were actually taking notes on the parts they wanted to execute. <laughs> Everyone else was just sitting back, right? But because I was looking for like, what's the one thing you're going to say that I want to remember and take action on? That's all that yeah. mattered to me. Most people are interested in entertainment, right? They're not interested in education. I mean, I think it was I can't remember who it, who used to say this that most people spend nine minutes, nine out of every ten minutes on entertainment and one mm-hmm. minute on education. You need to flip that. You need to spend nine minutes on education, one minute on entertainment. And, you know, so when I'm watching things, I'm watching documentaries. Like when I'm going to bed at night, I'm not watching. Every now and then I slip in a little blacklist or something interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but let me tell you, I'm watching documentaries. Last night I'm watching a documentary on jobs. I've already seen that documentary 30 times. I'm watching it again. So when I'm watching things, I'm watching documentaries. I'm watching uh, I'm watching success stories. I'm watching biographies. Hmm. I'm, not watching, I'm not watching entertainment. I There's agree. For that, but but we got it all screwed up right now. I agree. I'm actually I'm exactly the same way, uh, and I I've learned because now that I've been going from I, I was had a very unhealthy eating habits as well, uh, and I recently was cleaning that up over the last four months. I lost like twenty some pounds, mm-hmm. and I've noticed something, and it was that the mind is a lot like the body in terms of the food you put in, right? And so a lot of people are consuming brain junk food, which is the entertainment, which is the the series. Too much of that. It's fine in moderation, like you said. It's fine to have that one thing once in a while. But they're eating it every day. It's just for their mind. They just can't see it because the mind doesn't get fat. But inside it does. It gets slow. It gets weak. Um, but when you have someone with a healthy mind like yourself who's watching these documentaries, who's used to consuming this this useful content, you actually go the other way. You don't so much enjoy the other. Like you, you can get sucked into it. But you kind of are aware. If you're like me, like I'm aware if I watch some entertainment, I kind of get, yeah, I was good. But I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I just ate too much junk food and I need to put something green in. I need to eat like a salad or something. And that's the documentary or a training course. You start to crave it more. Like you're not satisfied without it. It's not the same feeling. Um, I think that's important. People have to realize that. It's the same concept. Once you, once you do eat clean, you don't want a bunch of junk food. Exactly. Once you, once you do get the results that you're, once you do get the results you're looking for in your business, you, you know, th- this is what I was asking my team this morning on the way in, I was on the phone with current customers and potential other customers. I could listen to a podcast, play it on Facebook, try to text people while I'm driving, listen to the radio. No, that's that's some time that I can use in a fruitful way to be calling current customers or potential customers. Mm. That's 10 to 15 minutes in the car. Let's not like like time. There's a high value of time and there's a low value of your time. 
high value of your time is moving you in a money generating uh, posture toward your dominant focus. Low value of your time is moving you away from your goals. It's activity you participate in the day. It's got absolutely nothing to do with of your dominant focus. Wow. I wish I was on the Dropping Bombs podcast because I'd have the button right now to drop the bombs. And that, that That's good. Like, I mean, this whole thing has just been you dropping bombs. That That's really good stuff. I mean, I think people, there's a lot they can learn from you. And I think if, if anyone's watching this, they're going to have to check out those programs, including myself. I'd actually like to make it out to a treat, a retreat in the fall if that's possible. Uh, we'll see where we're at. I have a few coming up before then, but that would be, that would be really cool. But no, this, this is, this is good stuff, man. This is good stuff. You're helping a ton of people. Um, I just want to know, like, Anyone listening, if we want to leave them off on a big tip, a big concept, is there anything that you would give to these aspiring entrepreneurs or business people that are stuck in their business? If they're going to do something, they're going to do something right now, they want to take action. What are they going to do? You need to get a coach. Mm. You, need to, you need to check your pride aside and understand that, the, that and not just any coach, you need the right coach. You need a person you have an affinity with. You need a person that you believe can get you to a higher frequency because smart people are going to figure this out. It's just going to take them a lot longer. Mm. Like, like, well, a good coach can accelerate your path. Like I think about those young professionals if, when I'm coaching them, that 18 to 25 year old. There's so many things I can do to help them perform at a higher frequency if they just get in and get going. Now, it may take them to their 30 to figure it out without me. With me, they can do it much faster. Like remember, I was coaching at 21. I was writing books at 25. I was starting businesses at 30. You started saying I wouldn't mess it around with my potential yeah. here. And too many people. They just mess around. They just mess around. I agree. I, I tend to agree. I mean, my, my life and business changed when I started hiring coaches in, in a big way. I didn't believe it because I thought all coaches say that what you should do is hire a coach. So you don't believe it at first. And then you hire a coach and you're like, damn, that was actually pretty good advice. I should have done that sooner um, because it's the truth. Even sometimes, even if that person, because some people say, well, they don't know more than me, right? Even if that's true, even if you're already an all-star, just like Tim Grover. Tim Grover was coaching some of the best. He wasn't a better athlete than his athletes in most cases, right? Like right. He, he wasn't a better athlete than – what did he coach? Michael Jordan? Yes, yes. Jordan. So Michael Jordan was, was, was phenomenal. There's no way that, that Tim Grover was a better basketball player than Michael Jordan. But he was able to coach him and bring him to a higher level because sometimes it's not just about, oh, I only need someone who's better than me at this thing. Sometimes you need someone who sees a bigger picture, who can hold you accountable, who has a deeper life experience. Like I find value in that as well. Totally agree. Right. Totally agree. So, Even the, all the best people in the world have a coach. Yeah. There's no shame in having a coach. It's actually a sign of strength. It's not a sign of weakness. It's oh, a sign 100%. of strength. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I got to get into this. I love it. I got to check out that. But what's the book called again behind you? Uh, I got Inside the Mind of a Monster is my newest one. Inside the Mind of a Monster is my newest nice. book. My wife's new book is called Living with the Monster. You can nice. get both of those in a bundle, and I strongly recommend that. Uh, that you can get both of those. I also think people should check out the program Monster Producer. If you go to CoachBert.com, follow me on Instagram, and I think you know, I think we we are coaching people every day to much higher frequencies. I want to get you a forty or fifty percent increase, and we can do that just by taking action on these programs. Yeah, that that's great. That's great. I'm going to link all that stuff. If you guys are listening or watching now, I'm going to link all that when the podcast goes live. Um, you'll be able to see this in the description of the podcast. I'll link all the products. We'll link the books. Do you prefer they go on Amazon for the books, or it's right on the website? I prefer them go to coachbird.com. Amazon doesn't have every one of my books. Some of them are exclusive, and they can only be sold through me. Like person of interest is a big one that can only be sold through me. So you know, just go to coachbird.com and, and, and buy them there. Nice. I'm going to go grab some of those now. And where can they find you on social media? Uh, search Coach Michael Burt. Anywhere you search, so search Coach Michael Burt, you're going to find me. Instagram, Facebook, follow my work. I'm pumping out a tremendous amount of content. YouTube. Hundreds of thousands of hours watched on YouTube every month. So that's a great place to get content. Wow. Hey, by the way, before I let you go, how, how important has social media been for the business? It's been very important. And I think we're just now getting better at it, to be honest with you. We're just now getting better. I still face the same problem everybody else faces, which is, is going from where I am, obscurity, to being a, a national, international person. Right. So we've got to be known by more people. We've got to get our Instagram following up. We have to do – I mean we've got to do all of it, man. It's, it's important to the whole thing. It's huge. Yeah, and I mean it's important too to separate the fluff from that because I think a lot of people sometimes just focus on one part of it where, hey, I need more followers. I need more – but sometimes there's a whole other part, like the whole paid advertising part. Sometimes you need the right lead gen system, the right follow-up system, the right automation systems, the right – a lot of times it's that paid advertising bringing the dollars, Right. So figuring, figuring that out as well in every business I think is, is powerful. But you guys seem to be doing it right. I've seen all your stuff. It looks great. 
Um, it looks powerful. It looks like people are connecting and engaging with you, and obviously business is doing well. So you're doing something right. Yeah. Well, I think I think if you're if you're good, I think the cream rises to the top, man. Mm. People are gonna know if you're authentic. The number one thing we hear from people is that they think I'm authentic. Mm. I'm real. I'm not. I'm not just trying to sell you something for the sake of. I really, I really do believe in transformation. <laughs> what you felt for me at 10x is who I am every day. So my whole belief is where there's no usage of a product or service, there can be no transformation. And where there's no transformation, there's nothing for people to talk about. There's got to be change. I got to be a catalyst for that change. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on again, Coach Michael Burt. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to go to that website right now, pick up the books, look at what else I can buy. And I encourage everybody else to do the same if they're watching or listening um, because this guy truly is a monster producer. And if you want to be a monster producer, you're going to have to start following this guy pretty closely. Thanks so much, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you. My honor. Thanks for having me today. See you soon. See ya. You've been listening to the Obscurity to Authority podcast. Tune in again next week with your host, Darren Cabral as he explores the blueprint of success.